everybody. Welcome back to the My View on the View podcast. Come on in, let's get started. Come on. Well, welcome back, everyone. This is My View on the View, a commentary podcast all about ABC's The View. I do something a little bit different than you're probably used to. If you are used to listening to people talk about the show or even watching them talk about it, I don't focus on the politics. I focus on the table and relational dynamics because I use the show as a template, as a teaching tool to teach and talk with you about life and life skills. So thank you so much for being here. Well, guys, listen, a lot of you know about this TED Talk, um, but I knew, I said, I bet you I have a lot of listeners who never even knew that Sunny did a very popular TED Talk back in 2015. And so I wanted to just give you guys this treat and share it with those of you who didn't know. So it was April of 2015 at Notre Dame University, Sunny Hostin gave a very popular, as I stated, TED Talk. And this was before her, her book came out, I Am These Truths. And so during this TED Talk, she revealed a lot of personal things that maybe folks who didn't watch the show had never heard, or maybe who had watched the show, but she had never really shared as deeply as she did on this stage. And her TED Talk title was A Possibility model. And I will tell you, it is such an inspirational talk, especially for young women of color. You know, one of my favorite uh, things she talks about here is when she pretended to be Soledad O'Brien for a long time. That was very, very interesting because all of us as women uh, at some point in our lives, maybe when we were younger, we had some woman outside of our home, outside of our parents that we looked up to and we wanted to quote unquote be like, and we started cutting our hair, wearing our hair like her, wearing our makeup like she did. All of these things that we do sometimes when we emulate the folks that we feel, hey, this person inspires me or hey, I want to be like this person. And I also enjoy when she talked about in this TED talk that she personally doesn't enjoy being told that she's a role model and she explains why. So for those of you who never heard Sunny Hawson's TED Talk, let's go into that now. I won't be back after it because it doesn't need anything else. Have a fabulous day. Let's go into a possibility model. I want to talk to you about, in, in my view, the possibility model. And I base that on, on Mark Twain's quote. Mark Twain, the author and literary icon said that there are two important days in your life, just two. One, the day you were born, and two, the day you find out why. One, the day you were born, two, the day you find out why. And wow, I love Twain, right? I'm a journalist, love him. But I think he kind of screwed that up. I think he kind of got it wrong. I think there are three life defining days in your life. Day one, of course, the day of your origin, the day you're born. Day three, what I like to call day three, of course, important, when you find out your purpose. We all talk about that so much, right? That sort of life-defining purpose, following your passion. So many people talk about that. The oracle, or as I, as you know who she is, Oprah talks about it all the time. <laughs> but I think there is a day two that is probably more important. The day two is the day you find out who you will not be, who you will not become. And that day two may be kind of fluid. It may be a couple of day twos. I like to think about it like playing air hockey. You know, you get bumped over here. Oh, that doesn't feel good. That's not what I'm going to be today. Or, oh, I fall over here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. That doesn't feel good. But even when you're playing air hockey, what you're trying to do is follow that path right, to get to the other side. And so that, I think, is where Mark Twain kind of screwed up. Now, my day one, the day I was born, the day I became, um, was thankfully not a defining moment for me. I was born, teenage parents, high school sweethearts, lived in the South Bronx, drugs, chaos, uh, in the South Bronx projects, a place where, which is so chaotic, most people's dreams are always either deferred or die there. Um, that did not define me. And too many people, I think, are tethered to that first day, their origin. They cannot see be, beyond that circumstance. So day one, while important, should not define who you are. 
My day two came really early, actually, in life. It came when I was about six years old. And I was sitting, and I remember the colors really well. I was sitting on a cold, black and white tile floor with red splotches everywhere. And I remember black, white, red, dark red, almost like wine. And my uncle, my favorite uncle, splayed out on the floor, having been stabbed in front of me. And his intestines were coming out. And I was, as a six-year-old, trying to help somehow in this Bronx tenement bathroom, pushing his, his stomach in. Um, but I remember with all that and the chaos, and I heard people screaming and yelling. I heard my father trying to make sense of it. I heard my, my mother calling 911. I heard my grandmother wailing. I remember thinking, hmm, uh-uh. I'm not going to live like this. I am not going to become this. I'm not going to take drugs. I'm not going to live a life of violence. I'm not going to have my children see this kind of stuff. This is not who I will be. And that defined me for so very, very long. People always ask me, why would you become a prosecutor? a black Dina putting your own people in prison. I can't begin to tell you how many times people ask me that question. And it was because I thought my day two was my day three. So my purpose was to make sure that those kinds of things didn't happen. I wanted to protect people. And so I became this, this prosecutor. And prosecuting child sex crimes, I never lost a case, I'd like to tell everyone. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I was good. I was good at it. And then I met the love of my life. I got married. I had a baby. And I thought, I don't want to be around the violence anymore. I don't want to do this. What am I going to do? I, I, I don't have a purpose. I don't, I don't have a passion. But I did translate that and luckily became a journalist and got to sort of talk about these issues on television. So I thought, oh, man, you know, I, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. That this, this is this is this is my 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 day three. Well, it wasn't really my day three, not at first anyway. I hadn't really found my passion. I hadn't really found my voice. I was still in the midst of day twos, and I, I think a lot of people experience that in terms of day twos, right? Sometimes it's the birth of a child that makes you think, "Huh, this is this is what I need to." This is where I need to be. Sometimes it's death. I call it conscious living, but so many people that, are, that have a, a, let's say they get diagnosed with cancer, they say, okay, this, I've got to live my life to the fullest. I've got to squeeze every drop out of this life. And for me, I realized, okay, if I'm going to be in my day two, day three, and I'm going to be successful at this, I, I, I've got to model off of somebody. So I started looking around CNN. Who can I be like? Who can I be like? Who can I be like? It's old Dad O'Brien. I got to kind of look like her. <laughs> I cut my hair, and I, it pains me when I look back on my old video. I cut my hair. Um, I started pronouncing things like her. I was speaking like her. I was doing all these things just to be like Soledad. And then I also started kind of modeling off of Oprah. You got a car. You got a car. You got hair. Okay. And I do all that kind of stuff. <laughs> it was, I look back on it, it was kind of ridiculous, kind of ridiculous, but I thought that, and that's, by the way, why I hate when people come up to me and they say, you're such a role model, Sonny, you're such a role model to me. I don't like the word role model because you really can't find your day three trying to be someone else. You can't, you can't because your day three is unique to you. It's authentic to you. It's innovative to you. Do you ever see actors who are, are, you know, who are famous and then their kids get into it? Hmm. Their kids are never as good as they are, ever, because it's not their day three. It's not what they're supposed to do. My husband's a doctor. I'm a lawyer. I've got two kids. I started thinking, oh, man, I know I got at least a lawyer or a doctor here. At least they're going to be financially secure. It's going to be great. Nope. So... 
you may ask, how did I find my day three or when did I find my day three? I found my day three in Sanford, Florida. I was still pretending to be Soledad. I got sent to Sanford and I was kind of interviewing people. And then I got the chance to meet Trayvon Martin's mother, Trayvon Martin's brother, and Trayvon Martin's father. And I'm sure everyone here has heard about that case, right? I think it was sort of the case that changed the way we look at, at justice. And when that verdict came in, I was floored. Regardless of what you believe happened that day when Trayvon Martin was killed, I think we can all agree that there were people on the one side of the issue, people on the other side of the issue, and people wanted their voices to be heard. They wanted their point of view to be heard. And while I was in Sanford, Florida, people started coming up to me. This isn't fair, Sonny. You have to go on air and you have to tell our story. You, ha you, you have a platform. You've got to tell our story. And I literally had that Oprah aha moment. I literally had it. It all made sense to me just like that. And I, I, t I will tell you, when you find your day three, it will be just like that. Because I've spoken to so many people about it, and they all say that. It's like, oh, it really does happen like that. And it totally happened for me like that. And I've um, really come into my own. I became more high profile at CNN. I was invited to do The View. I've been on Dr. Phil. I've met Oprah. I mean, all of these things really happened when I started being my authentic and true self. So I am certain that there are day ones, day twos, and day threes. Now, some of the mantras that I play for myself in terms of my day three is a quote by John Wooden. He says, you can't live a perfect day without doing something for someone else. You can't live a perfect day without doing something for someone else. And I started living my life like that. Every day I try to do something for someone else who can't repay me. Who can't repay me. Because we like to do things for other people, but we want to know the payoff, right? It's like, oh yeah, I'll help you study in math. You're really good at English, right? Would you help me write my paper? People do it all the time. Sure, I'll take you to the airport, pay for my gas. So I try to do something every day for someone else who can't repay me. The other mantra that I try to live by is Proverb 31.8. Speak up for those who can't speak for themselves. Ensure justice for those being crushed. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Ensure justice for those being crushed. That was a big part of my day two, right? As a prosecutor, it certainly is a big part of my day three. And my day threes, what's so interesting to me is that I am seeing so many other people, young people, have those day twos and day threes. I've been seeing it in Ferguson, Missouri, where I was also on the ground. I've seen it in the Eric Garner case here in New York. I've seen it in Ohio with little Tamir Rice, 12 years old, shot because he was playing with a pistol, air pistol, air pellet gun. And when I say I'm seeing people day twos and day threes, what I'm seeing is people, young people, thoughtfully protesting in Ferguson over 200 days. You know how cold it is in Ferguson? It was freezing. And they were, they're out there day in and day out. Putting, finding their path, finding their voice, speaking up for other people. And regardless of what you believe in Ferguson, because I know that issue can be really you know, polarizing. I think we can all agree something wasn't right in Ferguson. Something wasn't right. But these people are out there speaking. And I think it's so brave and bold. Much braver than the Twitter thugs with their keyboard courage, right? those of y'all who like to tweet nasty things to me. And I get that quite a bit. And, and that's the other thing I like to talk about because when you find your day three, it is so empowering. You are being so authentic. 
that you do not care what anybody thinks. And so you are using your authentic voice and people will come after you. I talk a lot about race relations on CNN because that just seems to be the issue of today, right? It's sort of the new civil rights movement, people are calling it with the protests and the new Selma. Um, and I, I speak about it quite often. I get the Twitter thugs, I'm a, race, I'm a racist, apparently. I'm also a race baiter, apparently. I'm also, uh, does anybody watch um, uh, Jimmy Kimmel's mean tweets? <laughs> when President Obama just read his mean tweets? I can't even read my, re my mean tweets, the stuff that's said about me. But it's so empowering, I think, um, to be able to live in your day three and live your authentic self. You don't really, really care. And it's not brave and bold to have keyboard courage. It's brave and bold to live your day three. And I think what's interesting about what I'm seeing in the day twos and day threes and the young people that are coming forward is that they're deciding who they will not be. I don't know that all of them have found their day threes, but they are deciding who they will not be. It's clear that people are deciding they will not be the fraternity members on the bus, right, with the racist chants. So many people have come up to me and said, that's not Mia, that's who I will not be. And I applaud that. So my message to you is your day one is behind you. Clearly, because you're all sitting here. Your day one is behind you. Do not let it define you. Had I let my day one define me, I would have been a statistic, right? I certainly wouldn't have gone to high school at 12 having skipped a grade, working hard to get out of my circumstance. I wouldn't have gone to college and landed here when I was 16 years old. And I certainly wouldn't have been speaking to all of you today. So your day one cannot define you. It's just your starting point. It's certainly not your ending. Your day two, again, I think is really fluid. My husband and I were talking about this on our drive here. And he said, you can't just talk about one a day two, because what you're really talking about, but I'm trying to explain it's a metaphor, right? I, mean, uh, I married someone that challenges me, but he's in the audience somewhere. Um, you, know, you know you are, baby. Um, <laughs> so your day two, yes, may not be like my day two, which was just that empowering moment when I was sitting on that floor with my uncle bleeding profusely and he did not die that day, thankfully, surprisingly, but he did die of AIDS because of a lifetime of drug addiction. So while I loved him, he was sort of the quintessential statistic, someone who did not live his potential, someone who allowed his day one to define him, someone who had opportunity but made a lot of bad choices. So your day two you should watch out for it because it may be when you're on the bus and everybody else is chanting and you videotape it because you know it's not right. Or it may be that your friends want to do some ecstasy and you go, mm -mm, it's not for me. Or it may be that guy that really, 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 really broke your heart and left you at the altar, but man, then you meet your Prince Charming. So your day two can be a bunch of different things. It can be that air hockey game, but it is leading you to that path. So I say watch out for your day two because your day three is right around the corner if you're looking for it. Although the distance between my day two and my day three was kind of long. But I will tell you that even with your day three, I hope that you let your desire to be of service help you discover that purpose. I hope that you let your desire to be of service help you find your purpose. Giving other people's, for me, my purpose is giving voice to other people, speaking up for those who cannot speak for themselves, ensuring justice for those being crushed, and trying to live a perfect day, doing something for someone else who can't repay me. 
and I hope that for all of you. Thank you. Here we go, here we go again. Trying hard, but you wanna be my.